slowly. He became aware of a blaze of ruddy light which seemed to emanate from the adjoining room. He got up softly and shuffled in his slippers to the door. The moment Scrooge's hand was on the lock, a strange voice called him by his name and bade him enter. The room had undergone a surprising transformation. The walls and ceiling were so hung with living green of holly, mistletoe and ivy that it looked a perfect grove from every part of which bright gleaming berries glistened and reflected back the light as if so many little mirrors had been scattered there. And such a mighty blaze went roaring up the chimney as that dull petrification of a hearth had never known in Scrooge's time, or Marley's, or for many a winter season gone, heaped upon the floor to form a kind of throne were turkeys, geese, Game, brawn, great joints of meat, sucking pigs, long wreaths of sausages, mince pies, plum puddings, barrels of oysters, red hot chestnuts, cherry cheeked apples, juicy oranges, luscious pears, immense twelfth cakes, and seething bowls of punch. There sat a giant, glorious to see who bore a glowing torch and raised it high to shed his light on Scrooge as he came peeping round the door. Ah, come in! Come in and know me better, man. I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me. You have never seen the like of me before.